Can you dissolve your depression? That's a great question. The answer is yes. Depression I define as a comparison of your current reality, which is balanced, to a fantasy about how life was expected to be or is supposed to be or should be or ought to be. As long as you have an expectation that does not match what's actually there, and you're comparing your life to that expectation, and that expectation is unrealistic, you're going to end up depressed. Depression is a feedback to let you know that what you're pursuing and what you're expecting in the world is not balanced and is not really centered, not authentic. So let me give an example. So let's say you meet up to somebody and you expect them to be nice, never mean, kind, never cruel, positive, never negative, give, never take, generous, never stingy, po peaceful, never wrathful, and considerate, never inconsiderate. You expect them to be one-sided, not both sides. If you have an unrealistic expectation on a human being to be one-sided, not both-sided, you have an unrealistic expectation. Now when you meet them, you're going to be angry at them because they're not living up to expectation. You're going to be aggressive towards them because you want them to change. You're going to feel betrayed because it's your fantasy that you put on them, not their action. And then you feel you want to blame them. Then you want to, you know, you'll be critical of them and challenge them. You'll be despaired and depressed. You'll want to escape and exit. You'll feel futility and frustration. You'll be grouchy and grieving the loss of the fantasy that you had. And then you'll also have uh, irritability and irrationality and you'll be jaded and feel like they're a jerk because you have an expectation on them that's unrealistic. And you'll be depressed with the A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J's of negativity, which is letting you know that you have an unrealistic expectation. The depression is there as a friend to let you know that the expectations are unrealistic of what you're putting on people. You may assume that, but the next illusion is not just the one-sided expectation, but the expectation that others are supposed to live in your values. And many times people who are activating their amygdala and are into pride and thinking they're righteous and thinking they know, they look down on people and expect others to live in their values, and then the people don't live in their values, they live in their own values, and you can expect them to automatically now betray you in your mind. But they didn't betray you, you betrayed you, but with having an unrealistic expectation on them. They live according to their own values. They make every decision according to what they think will give them the greatest advantage or disadvantage at that moment. So if you expect them to live in your values, you're going to have anger and aggression, blame and betrayal, criticism and challenge, despair and depression, and all the ABCDFGHIs of negativity. But that's because depression is actually a friend. <laughs> I know it's not what you're used to hearing. You're used to hearing it's a biochemical balance and I need a pharmaceutical. Well, the pharmaceutical industry wants you to believe that because that gives them lots of cash. But I'm not interested in giving them cash. I'm interested in giving you your power back and making you ground yourself on your expectations. I have taken thousands of people in the breakthrough experience who've had clinical depression or varying degrees of depression and ask them, okay, so what are you depressed about? Uh, I don't know. Well, you can't have fear without, you can't have fear of the unknown. You have the fear of the content of the mind. You can't have depression of the unknown. You have depression about the content of the mind that's not living up to expectation. So if I go and find out at that moment, what are you expecting life to be? If, if you're depressed, you're obviously comparing this life to something about what you wish it would be. What do you wish would be different? Well, I wish my mom would have been there. Well, if your mom had been there, what would have been the drawback? Well, there wouldn't have been a drawback. I'd be happy. Well, that's a fantasy. And you assume that if, they, if this was this way, there'd be all positive, no negatives. And therefore, your life is negatives without positives to compensate for it by the law of contrast and comparison. So the second you go in and ask people what are they depressed about and get the content of what it is, it's a fantasy. It's an unrealistic expectation. It's an expectation of them or others to be one-sided or the world to be one-sided or others or them to be living outside their values. You're expecting others to live in yours or you're expecting yourself to live in others. You can be angry at yourself or angry at others. But every one of those depressions are there have a source. And those sources with those expectations leave you feeling angry because unmet expectations. When you do, you have certain neurochemistry that comes on place because you have certain ratios of perceptions that are skewed. And you have subjective expectations that are not balanced. And your chemistry is not balanced. Pharmaceutical industry wants to capitalize on that because they now sell you a little drug that they think is going to balance it. 
And maybe that helps a few people who are not willing to be accountable and not willing to look at themselves and reflect and take ownership of what they're doing and creating in their life with their expectations. But depression is not necessarily a bad thing. I, and, and I know some of you think, well, I was really depressed. I was suicidal. Well, that's because you're comparing your current reality to a fantasy about how life's supposed to be and it ain't matching your fantasy. And you think the fantasy is a better life, either an afterlife that's better, you'll think, I kill myself, I'll go to a better place in the afterlife because of some religious dogma, or possibly because you think that if I, if I end my life, I won't be in suffering there. Well, these are illusions that we think we have. I'd rather go in there and identify exactly what are you comparing your life to at this moment. Find out what that is. Find out the fantasy that's behind it. It's a fantasy of either one-sided expectations or expectations of people living your values or you're to live in their values, or you're expecting yourself to be one-sided with moral hypocrisies. And if you go and find out what those unrealistic expectations are, there's a question that we can hold them accountable to. I worked with recently with a gentleman that was depressed about some things in his life. We have found out what the fantasy was. We asked him what's the drawbacks. He couldn't see any drawbacks. To the, he thought that's the way it should be and that ought to be because of his indoctrination. And then I went in there and I said, well, what would be the drawbacks of it? We finally came up with the drawbacks of his fantasy and his depression was gone. Done. Because his life now was now compared to something that was grounded and real. The way it is, the magnificence of the way it is, is far greater than any fantasies we impose on life. And we get indoctrinated. Paul Dirac, the Nobel Prize winner, said, it's not that we don't know so much, we know so much that isn't so. We're indoctrinated by moral hypocrisies about how life we think is supposed to be instead of the magnificence how it is. There's no one-sided people out there. There's no saint without a sinner out there, a hero without a villain out there. I think all of our TVs have been demonstrating that in the last few years, showing that the heroes have another side. You have both sides. You're not a one-sided individual. You can't live in somebody else's values for, for more than a few hours or weeks. They can't live in your values. Set realistic expectations, set goals that are really objectives, not fantasies, and watch how the depression takes care of itself. If you need assistance on that, let me help you. I, I teach people in the Demartini method and find out about this method on how to ask questions for yourself to dissolve your own depressions. Thousands of people have been doing this and, it, and they don't have to go and take the pharmaceutical systems. They just take accountability for their life and set real goals and real objectives in real time with real strategies and calm down the delusions and moral hypocrisies that they're placing on themselves and get grounded about the way the magnificence of the world is. There is a magnificence, but the magnificence has two sides, not one side. And depression is only one pole. It, it, depression is there to break your addiction to fantasies of elation. And as long as you're in fantasies and elation and euphoria is searching for and looking for immediate gratification, your depression is there to try to break that addiction and to help you wake up. So I just want to take a few moments to share with you something about uh, the illusions of depression just in case you've had that question in your mind, that you have more power than you might have been given credit for it, and there is a solution for it. So take advantage of it. Go on the line and go and, and find out about it on, the, on uh, my website and come to the Breaks Experience so I can make a difference helping you transform your so-called depression. It's a comparison of your current reality to a fantasy about how you wanted life to be. Let's take out the fantasies. That's what the Executive Center in the Brain's for. And let's put in real objectives that have real time frames, real strategies, real objectives that you can achieve. And let's go do something amazing that makes a difference in the world.